beautiful fish aroma. This is niboshi again, or dried sardines. Now I'm gonna finish up my bowl here and then we're gonna head to the next place. Okay, so we're here in Kinshicho, we're also Oshiyage. And this neighborhood, as you can see, they're pretty much famous for that right there. That is Tokyo Sky Tree, the tallest tower in Tokyo. The ramen shop that we're walking to is called Takesue Premium Tokyo. Now the word premium is there, and I think that's very fitting for the ramen that we're about to get. This is a very modern, let's say, more refined sort of ramen. Very delicate, almost looking. And the way that they prepare those meaty toppings is also arguably delicate. Excellent ramen, again, one of the most top ranked in Tokyo. Ready to dive in? Ready to dive in? Really excited to visit here. Let's go to this next place. And ho, I can see our ramen shop straight ahead. We are almost there. And I'm so excited to try this next bowl. See, so yeah, in between bowls, I need a little bit of fuel, getting some coffee. If my eyes ever start to get wonky, I'm like, all right, need a coffee. All right, here we are. Takesu at Tokyo Premium. Let's go inside for our next one. Alrighty, time to order. We've got our ticket machine here, and just like at the first place, probably the area you want to hang around at is the top left part of the ticket machine. Now at the first place, we had a soy sauce or shoyu powered ramen. I'm gonna now be ordering a shio or salt seasoned ramen instead. Money goes in first. Or sometimes twice. Now I'm gonna be pressing here the ajitama shio soba. So this is the marinated egg in a salt seasoned ramen. So both Tokyo ramen shops that we're featuring today, they have the word soba on their menu. Soba are buckwheat noodles. But at these ramen shops, they're not serving soba buckwheat noodles. They're still serving ramen wheat flour noodles. Back in the day, ramen was called chuka soba or Chinese soba. If you see the word soba outside, a restaurant might be serving soba buckwheat noodles or it might be ramen. A little bit tricky, but ramen shops still like to use the word soba sometimes. Just keep that in mind. This is normally for extra noodles, but I'm getting extra toppings this time. All right, got my tickets here, got my change as well, and I'm all set. All right, you're gonna start with the soup. It's such a beautiful noodle fold. I almost don't want to disrupt everything by putting the spoon in there. But I'm gonna try and see if I can get something in the, the corner pocket here. All right, here we go. Golden flavored chicken soup. It's a very light chintan chicken soup held up by slightly salty uh, salt seasoning. Beautiful, beautiful flavor. Excellent soup and definitely not gonna leave you feeling heavy. And like matching the presentation, there's a certain delicateness to it overall. Look at these noodles here. It's almost like you're playing a banjo or something like that. And they're just waiting to be picked up as such. So these noodles are definitely thinner, a little bit more delicate, I think, to match what is a more delicate broth compared to the last place where we had thicker noodles. Now it slurps up. It looks like we've got little bits of whole wheat flex in the noodles um, and not F-L-E-X, like a flex is in F-L-E-C-K-S. These are clearly very high grade noodles. It's nice with the noodles, you can get some of those crunchier textures with the negi or spring onions and also actual onions here. They put actual tamanegi or onions on the side here. And you've got as well here, kaiwara sprouts, which provide a little bit of freshness to everything overall. Everything goes very well together, very well balanced. Now, on to the toppings. What I haven't gotten to yet is the ginormous uh, bok choy here. You see this in you know certain Chinese noodle dishes, but not so much in ramen, but they decided to have bok choy here. I personally love bok choy, great crunch, and it's a lot of fun to eat. In addition to that, you've got bamboo shoot here. This is the longer part, or I should say the top part of the bamboo shoot. Hosaki memma, a more common topping nowadays in ramen as, as opposed to the bottom half of the bamboo shoot. So you probably heard my slurping earlier, and this is not probably common outside of Japan, 
And I grew up here, but I'm kind of a hybrid, you know. I, I slurp my ramen, but maybe I don't slurp some of my other noodle dishes, whether this is Vietnamese pho or even, let's say, Italian pasta. I do this for three reasons. Reason number one is that you're cooling it down. Ramen soup is normally very hot. By slurping, it's not as hot. Reason number two is that you're also complimenting the chef. And now don't worry, if you're not slurping, he or she is not gonna come out and scold you. Reason number three, maybe most important, is that you're taking in more oxygen through your nostril. Kind of like with wine, it's an aerating experience. You're enhancing the flavors. You're not just making that sound. You're also kind of pushing the noodles into your mouth. So for these three reasons, feel free to slurp. You don't have to though. I'm gonna slurp though. So we've talked about the vegetables. Now let's move on to the meat. This is the main attraction I think for today. So we've got two types of duck meat here. This first one is actually broiled with a blowtorch. So it's gonna have a wonderful smoky flavor. Duck is just so good. I think when it's broiled too, it provides more of that smokiness and just a wonderful, wonderful fatty flavor. Now here, this is a different type of duck, aigamo which I believe if we were to translate is also a sort of cross between a mallard and a duck. And this one is actually smoked. I think compared to when it was broiled, we're gonna get a different flavor profile. That smoked flavor is so strong from start to finish, more so than when it's broiled. Just a wonderful, wonderful smoky, and of course fatty duck flavor. We just moved on from the duck, we're moving on to pork. And right here what I have is pork shoulder, and this is actually a pretty big, uh, hefty chunk here. And this has been broiled. Abudi is basically the word in Japanese. So broiled, it's gonna have a nice smoky flavor here too. Let's go. It's almost like shredded pork or like something you'd find in a pulled pork sandwich even. It's got a stronger soy sauce seasoning, more salty than sweet. Keeping with the pork theme, we also have pork shoulder here. This has been cooked on low heat for a longer period of time. Teon chori, they call it. And sometimes when you do this, they can even be pink, almost like a rare. This is not quite like that, but you can see a little bit of pink in the middle here. Let's see what this tastes like. It was softer than the previous cut of pork shoulder, the way they prepared it because of that low temperature cook. It's just such a beautiful, all you need to do is place it on your tongue. You can feel the flavors, um, yeah, move around in your mouth. Delicious, delicious. Now we're moving on to beef. You don't get beef that much in ramen as a topping, so a little bit unusual as it is. We're showcasing three again, types of different meats here. Ending with beef. This is closer to a roast beef. Let's see what it tastes like. Oh yeah, that was delicious. Um, I love the fact that like within this ramen, it's like you've got a meat platter. It's really a different experience, whether it's the duck, pork, or the beef that I just had. And I'm now moving on to the last piece of beef. And this is gyu bara, where bara is basically like the rib section of the cow. You can see a little bit of fat on the side here, and really fatty. It's also quite gelatinous. You know you're eating beef. It's got a strong, of course, beef flavor. This is a special egg that we got here too. This is very much a dark brown. Now here at this place, they actually, before marinating it in the soy sauce and the tare, or seasoning, what they do is they smoke it first, and then they marinate. This is giving it an extra brown color. I think instead of breaking it uh, first, I think I'm just gonna have a bite of it and break it in half that way. Oh. <laughs> That's good. On the outside, you really can taste that smokiness. Really runny on the inside. It's got that wonderfully jammy texture. Oh, and look when I pick it up, it just oozes out. Super creamy and rich. Beautiful egg. They're not messing around with the egg here. Oh, that was delicious. I hope you all enjoyed yeah, watching that ramen and also watching today's episode. This is the first episode again in a ramen series from Japan by Food. Hope you enjoyed it and let us know what you thought in the comments from the two shops. Is there a bowl that you particularly wanted to eat? Do let us know. This is Frank, your host, signing out and yeah, hoping to see you in the next ramen video here on Japan by Food. Thanks for tuning in again.